Hi, this is Bethany with Morgan James Publishing, and today I'm speaking with our author, Tim Ash. And Tim is the author of Unleash Your Primal Brain, Demystifying How We Think and Why We Act. And Unleash Your Primal Brain is a fast-paced tour through our brains and behavior from the perspective of evolution. Hi, Tim. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hey, Bethany. It's my pleasure. So I am so excited to ask you some questions about your book and, and why you wrote it, because, mm. um, I, you know, you are known as an expert on online marketing. So why did you decide to write a book about how the brain works? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, I've written books before, a couple of them, in fact. This is uh, my online marketing book, Landing Page Optimization, the second edition. And I... Um, sold 50,000 copies of it. It was translated into six languages and it was all about making websites more effective. So I ran a digital marketing agency for over 20 years and we created $1.2 billion in value for the Googles and Nestle's and Facebook's, the Expedia's of the world on down. But after a while, what I realized, some of our clients, they use neuromarketing and how people really think to make a profit. And most of them did it ethically, but a few, not so much. I think we live in this age of um, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and everybody knows everything about us, every little data crumb we leave out there. So in a way, we're getting exploited. We're bringing the proverbial knife to the gunfight as consumers. The big companies have all the advantages. And so I really wanted to step back from the marketing and level the playing field a little bit. So the, the purpose of the book is to explain the basic operating system for human beings um, and just say, hey, this is what they're doing to you. And this is how you can avoid it or take it into account or know yourself better. So that was really my goal. Wow. How interesting. Um, so I know in the book, you talk, you know, so much about the brain and how it works. Um, could you tell us today what some common myths about the brain might be? Mm, well, there, there are many that I bust in the book. Uh, one of them is just the foundational chapter, which is the lie of rationality. The first chapter, we're taught to think that the highest achievement of being human is to be rational, to be like Mr. Spock in Star Trek. Well, Captain, there's a 98.7% probability that we're going to die in this encounter with the Klingons. Thank you, Mr. Spock. But really, this bias towards uh, logical thinking is actually a myth. We literally can't decide without involving emotions. The rational mind gives us options, but emotions are what we use to narrow down those choices and pick the one that we're going to actually act on. And so the brain is kind of on autopilot. The more ancient parts of the brain are, they are doing their thing automatically outside of your awareness in many cases, 95% of the time. And it's only once in a while that the conscious brain is woken up in case something is interesting has never been seen before, but it's not dangerous. Then we'll take a look at it with the logical mind. So that's definitely one myth. Another one is this notion that we have a left brain and a right brain, and one is creative and the other is logical. That's not true either. <laughs> In fact, the cerebral cortex, and I shave my head just for you so you can see, um, it, the bias is we're looking at it from the top of the head. Underneath that reasoning brain, there's the emotional brain that we share with mammals, and then there's the reptilian brain that just is automatic reflex and keeps the lights on, digestion, fight or flight, all of that stuff's happening. I'm sure you didn't have to think about keeping your heart beating last night as you slept, right? That's happening um, through the, the reptilian brain. And then I'd say another uh, common misconception is that we have perfect memory. You know, I don't know if you've seen that show Black Mirror about uh, his kind of science fiction. And there's this idea in a lot of science fiction that you can just download a human being into a machine and then you can always rewind your life and see what your wedding day was like and how perfect it was, that sort of thing. It turns out that's not true at all. Memories aren't there to be a perfect recording. They're there to help us survive. So memory, most things never even make it into memory. They're ignored. The brain is a giant ignoring machine. The ones that do make it in, in order to be really, really memorable, they have to be 
associated with strong emotions. They're all often distorted. They get, um, they fade with time. They're overlaid with new information and new memories. So memory is not accurate and memory is not complete. And that's a very important insight from the book as well. Absolutely. Especially when you think about like the evolutionary side of things and, and how that, that memory and how, how your brain worked to ultimately uh, help you survive. Um, yes. So, so fascinating. Um, so tell me, who do you really feel like would most benefit from reading your book? Hmm, that's a great question. I look at this as the basic operating system for all human beings. It's, it's about what all 8 billion of us on the planet share. And my particular perspective about it was to retrace the evolutionary arc. So starting with the very earliest life forms, talking about um, things we share with fruit flies, <laughs> basic things like dopamine, for example, we think about that as, um, how would you say, a, uh, a uniquely human thing. Dopamine is that reward chemical that shows you the three blinking dots on social media and makes you want to know what the person's going to say. Well, we share it with fruit flies going back 400 million years. So it's not a uniquely human thing. So for me, I wanted to retrace the arc of evolution from memory um, and brain chemicals and learning and risk-taking and the mammalian herd stuff we all share and gender differences, sexuality, storytelling, culture. So it's like to order, in order to understand what makes us human, you have to retrace that whole evolutionary arc. And the red thread through that, the common tie is the evolutionary psychology. So this book is for literally anyone who has a brain. Now, it's not applied to any topic, but there are three main audiences for it. The first is business. As I mentioned, I ran a marketing agency. We derived huge value from applying this to marketing, but also to leadership, sales, and things like that. Building corporate culture has a lot to say about all of it. The second would be relationships, uh, both in work and personal relationships, understanding what motivates other people, how we form into tribes and groups and the importance of culture. Uh, and then finally, this is also fantastic for people that want to work on personal development because it's a kind of a no-nonsense look at our biases, um, our tendencies, the things that we struggle with, for example, uh, good habits, working out, eating well, things like that. And uh, what pulls us away from those from an evolutionary standpoint? So I would say that you can read this book by putting on a different set of blinders. Read it for business, you'll get a lot of business value. Read it for personal development. There's tons in there that is going to serve you well. Amazing. Wow. Well, I feel like I could ask you questions about this book and this topic all day long. But um, I also know you do a lot of, you know, a lot of keynotes and speaking. You do a lot of consulting. Yes. Um, so if people are interested in learning more about you and all of the things that you offer and do or more information about the book, Tim, what's the best way for them to reach you? Well, as you mentioned, you know, and looking at my keynote speaker badge wall back there, I've, I've done over 200 appearances at virtual and live events across four continents. Uh, so if you need training, corporate speaking, marketing advisory services, that information is all at timash.com. It's very easy to find, T-I-M-A-S-H.com. And if you're interested in the book, including the complete table of contents, the introduction, what other people have to say about it, um, just go to primalbrain.com uh, and it's available in ebook, audiobook narrated by me, and of course, paperback worldwide uh, as of April 6, 2021. Awesome. Well, Tim, thank you so much for spending some time today talking with me about your new book. Congratulations on the launch of Primal Brain. We are so excited to be your publishing partner. And uh, thanks again for spending some time with me today to talk about your book and your message. Oh, Bethany, it's been my absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you.